Madison Frank for Exercise Science. And their sponsor is Dr. Ronald Bendel. And their talk will be, does a combination, or is entitled, does a combination of aerobic exercise and mindfulness reduce burnout syndrome among healthcare workers? I'll give the floor to Madison and Antonella. Plus is just a um, form 
that screens individuals to ensure that they are healthy enough for exercise. So our subjects that we found, we had 12 sedentary individuals. For us, that just meant that they didn't exercise more than 150 minutes a week. Um, and they were all healthcare workers with at least one year of experience within the age range of 18 to 65 years old. And we had male and female subjects. So the way that we set up our study, it was conducted over the course of six weeks. We randomly split up our subjects into four different groups, so that's three people per group. And the first group was mindfulness and exercise. So mindfulness can come in many forms. It can be journaling, taking a mindful walk, something along the lines of that. We specifically had audio recordings of mindful meditations that our subjects would complete twice a week for 10 minutes. And then they also had aerobic exercise, which could be walking, running, biking, that they would do for 30 minutes for two sessions a week. So then the second group just did those two sessions of exercise, the third group did the two sessions of mindfulness, and the fourth group was their control, so they had no changes to their everyday life over the six week program. Um, so all of our participants were assessed using the Moss Lodge Burnout Inventory to measure how burnt out they were. Um, the Moss Lodge Burnout Inventory, or the MBI, is a pretty standard way for assessing burnout among individuals. We specifically use the MBI for medical personnel and so this included 22 questions um, specifically for this population, um, and it assessed them in emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and personal achievement. So each subject got a score for each of these categories for each of those 22 um, burnout subjects. So we ran our statistics, we used an ANOVA test, and we, our alpha value was set at 0.05, um, and the graphs that we are gonna be showing you here um, produced just so this first graph, graph represents emotional exhaustion. Um, so as you can see, the combined group is represented with the blue line, the exercise is the red line, mindfulness is the green line, and control is the pink line, and that's true for all of our graphs. So if you look at the p-value, you can see there was no statistical significance here. However, there was a decrease in both the combined and the exercise group in their emotional exhaustion, which is what we were hoping to find um, within this population. The next thing we looked at was depersonalization, and our results shown for this category are here. Um, so we did find statistical significance in this, and as you can see, the exercise group is what's causing the significance. They had a decrease in depersonalization, which is promising as exercise group improvement. And finally, this is our graph for personal achievement. Once again, we found statistical significance here within the exercise group. This is something that you want to increase because you want people to feel like the work that they're doing is worthwhile. So seeing that the exercise group increased, again, is what we were hoping to find here. So although we did find some statistical significance throughout our study, um, there are some limitations though as well. So with our study, we did have a small subject number um, as well as one subject who dropped out from the combined subject group. So having 11 people and trying to extrapolate that data for a larger population of healthcare workers in general can be very difficult. We also did our study completely virtually. So with that, you have a lot more self-report and a lot less control as a researcher, which can add some different variables. And then we conducted our study over the course of six weeks. So when we looked at the research for mindfulness, a lot of those studies were conducted over eight weeks or possibly 10 weeks. And mindfulness is a skill. It's something that takes time to perfect and you can't get it right the first time around. So doing it over the course of six weeks may not have been enough time to necessarily perfect that skill. Another thing that could have influenced our results um, was just how COVID was at the beginning of our program versus the end. Um, so when our participants started their program, um, COVID was still in like the peak of the Omicron wave, whereas when they took the post-test, things had kind of leveled off. So one subject that we had had to fire people in the middle of our study, another subject got a raise, and even just looking at the acute stress that can come from a hospital environment or a stressful work environment could change the way that a person is feeling at the time and the way that their burnout is perceived. So it is obviously clear that COVID has exacerbated this problem of burnout, um, but our study kind of shows a promising solution um, of exercise to combat this issue. So doing as much as an hour a week of exercise could be life-changing to any person. We also think that it's important that further research is done, um, especially within the exercise group, to try to decrease burnout using this sort of intervention. Um, but we would like to thank the Exercise Science Department for giving us this opportunity to explore an area of our interest. Um, we would like to thank Dr. Mendel and Dr. Wyatt for advising us throughout this process. And we also just want to thank everybody here today for showing up and being such a great audience and the Scholarly Committee for giving us this opportunity. 
Um, well, now I'll open the floor to any questions that you